At Armbray, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice, and I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.
Good evening, basketball fans, and welcome to Maritime Athletic Profiles for tonight's coverage of Armbray Osprey's boys basketball action. My name's Alan April. I'll have the call joined by the legendary Hall of Famer Bev Greenlaw on color commentary. Bev, how you doing tonight? Absolutely. It's a Monday night in Nova Scotia in November, and that means basketball action, and we've got ourselves a dandy tonight. Two teams really on the rise in the local basketball scene, the Armbray Ospreys and the Millwood Knights. Armbray wearing white here at their home court, the Ospreys Nest in beautiful South End Halifax. Millwood in black and blue with red trim. And Bev, as we mentioned, it's early in this year's season. Armbray's played one league, or J, uh, Millwood has played one league game and Armbray's played two, but both teams have had a lot of experience at some tournaments coming into this week. As you mentioned, the talent of Armbray, and that is big number 15, Trave Jones, with a block on one end and cleans up the miss on the other for the first two of the night. And our clock hasn't started running it. Again, early in the season, even the scorekeepers need a little bit of... Uh... Well, now it is two zip as Armbray uh, got two on the board, but... I'm looking forward to that matchup on the inside as Trave versus Donovan Reed, the grade 12 forward wearing number nine for Millwood who played on the Nova Scotia under 17 provincial team. And that is a heavyweight matchup. Of so we're still working out some kinks with the table here, but let's talk briefly. Uh, Okay, we're having some audio issues on the webcast as well. well. We'll just continue to talk through it. I can hear myself. Can you hear me? We're, we're pretty close together. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, as mentioned, second game of the regular season for Armbray, third for Millwood. But both these teams were at some very high-level tournaments this past weekend. The Armbray Osprey were at the Case Canadian Accredited in Independent School Tournament in Montreal at Lower Canada College. And they saw some excellent competition including losing to the eventual champion St. George's Vancouver, one of the top teams from British Columbia. And a turnover there. Yeah, I was. Uh, I coached the Sacred Heart School of Halifax Sharks. We were there as well. We also lost to St. George's, but Armbray in that tournament went 4-1 and one and probably had one of the younger teams out there. Uh, one of the things, it's an under-19 tournament, and some of the Quebec high schools have grade 13, so... You know, for Armbre with a, a bunch of grade 10s and grade 9s even featured prominently in their roster to compete and beat some, some Quebec schools, as that is a beautiful take, right-hand scoop, Ronai Beals. As Paul Otho with the three-pointer, no good. Rebound is cleaned up by Jaden Lucas. He can't get it to go. And the floater, just a cap on the rim right now for the Knights. Those are three good looks from in tight. Oh, as Rone Beals splashes from the parking lot and a quick 7-0 lead for the Osprey will force Damon Cole and the Knights to take a timeout and talk things over. And what a start there for Rone Beals. As we continue to uh, just try to get our audio issues fixed here. Equipment adjustment on the fly. I, I can hear you from here. Well, we'll just talk through it and, and see what happens. So, I mean, right now you're, you're seeing the talent of young Mr. Beals of Armbray Academy.
Forrest rims out. Another offensive rebound for the Knights, and Donovan Reed will head to the line to shoot two, and you predicted it, but offensive rebounding, we're already seeing an advantage on the Millwood side. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a challenge for Embrace throughout the season against the better teams. The better teams tend to be senior laden, and they will go hard to the old boards, and they will physically just be a little bit stronger and often bigger than Armbray. Good ball movement there against the trap. Another open three there for Forrest, and yet another offensive rebound for the Knights. Now Donovan Reed, deep post position. Beautiful he's, take he's with the left inside. hand. I think Armbray's going to have to double him as the game goes on. One-on-one, -on -one, he's just physically a little too much. That is a tough finish by Mr. Reed as Sue Beasley gets a touch of the ball there off the turnover by the Osprey, and Millwood's starting to ramp up the pressure. Now is gonna come out in the full court press. As this is Barori Toshimwe, the grade 12 guard. As mentioned, the entire starting five of the Knights, grade 12 senior players, although they do have the grade 10 guard, Aaron Forrest, handling the ball right now. He is pressured and will swing it over to Jaden Lucas, tough drive, finishing off the glass. Another provincial team member, Jaden Lucas. Strong take, turned the corner, and it became a pretty easy layup for him. Tough shot by Renai. Renai floats it up, no good. One and done as Reed cleans up the glass. Now Lucas skips to the corner. Forrest, lefty off. three ball is off. Beals with the rebound, and he'll look to push. Osprey going okay, left to right. Now Jones at the top of the key. Extra pass for Nadeau. He'll escape the defender, lost it momentarily. This is Nye Johnson. Nye knifes into the left hand and gets the roll. Nye's strength is as a penetrator, and that was well chosen and well executed. So far, you've, you've said it with your commentary, the ball movement by Millwood is better than what Arm, Armbray have done so far. As another three ball rims out, and Jones cleans up the rebound. You're gonna see he is gonna to have to do a lot on the glass for Armbray today. As Johnson now drives baseline, point. floats it up and in. Tough finish there. My guess is that Millwood are a little surprised, Allen, by this open. Millwood fresh off a good performance this past weekend at the Citadel High Tournament. They lost in the finals to the CPA Cheetahs. And from my understanding, they might have left a little bitter taste in their mouth. Certainly didn't need any motive, extra motivation going into this league game, know, but if they did, they got it. Talking to Coach Tramble, he was really pleased with the experience they gained and the quality of the competition they faced in Quebec. He said a variety of styles and a lot of well-executed basketball. And Tough take by, again by Nye Johnson. Nye Johnson is heating up, and we're going to get a technical foul after the whistle on Jaden Lucas. But Nye Johnson, three drives in a row from the left wing, from the right wing, from the left baseline. I mean, talk about what makes him so good at, at driving the ball and finishing with either hand. One of the things that's up and down the lineup for Armbre, you're going to see a lot of quick feet, a lot of quick hands. And uh, the, the, one of the challenges we talked in their last game here when they played Bayview, they got into foul. Some of their better players got into foul trouble early, frankly, because they have such quick hands, but they weren't always moving the feet. <laughs> so, so you get tempted. When you've got quick hands, you get tempted. And they're trying to do strip the ball handler, which as the quality of competition goes up, that becomes more difficult. So they've got to learn a little bit more patience, use their assets, and work a little bit more to put pressure on the ball to force situations where their quick hands and feet off the ball can come into play. What Nye has shown us offensively tonight, and Nye, by the way, is still recovering from a high ankle sprain. He is right. not at 100%. <laughs> so what he's just done <laughs> is, is at less than 100%. Well, for me, it's, it's impressive, the steps. Uh, you know, he's, he's not the tallest player on the court, but he's using those long legs and sneaking through small spaces with, with yeah. the really uh, extremely good pace on his quick steps. though and yeah. his body control is getting better each year as Elijah Mantley checks in offensive rebound right up and in that's I think oh uh, that's Peyton, not Elijah Peyton Mantley. Flint oh and yes you're gonna see between with oh, Peyton yes. and Treve now on the court okay. together both of those two Alan are, are gifted rebounders Peyton Flint, number 23 on the roster, but wearing number three number on the three court on today. Number three on the court. There you go. <laughs> and there is nice Beals hit. getting his Remember hands in the passing lane. Remember what I just said about lane. hands. Beals, tough made step that, through. Made that too difficult. 
and had the layup on the left side, should have just slashed in and finished. And Donovan Reed erases it from behind, and then that's Elijah Mantley, correct? Yes. Hey, and there you go. Okay. Yeah. Fifty <laughs> percent. Elijah is a great nine kid. Yeah. Uh, Left-handed. Um, still, still maturing, growing physically, but really for his age and stage, a very good mental approach to the game. There goes Renai again. He'll yes, shift nice right into the body so of far, Donovan Reed and finishes through. Millwood has no answer on ball for on ball defense. Uh, the arm break kids are breaking them down and getting real good looks. Reed on the left wing, bottled up by Jones. Swings it to the top of the key as Lucas, that's Shane Lucas, driving in. Another second chance opportunity. Reed, good pressure there by Flint. And we're getting a little chippy here already, little, Bev. Little, yeah, already. And I think we may have uh, Manny States. Yep, another tee. That one's going to go against Peyton Flint. So one technical yeah. for each team already, and we're less than six minutes into this one. Yeah, at that, at this stage, you don't really want that. You've got everything going for you. Momentum, um, you know, Millwood are getting there but not finishing. You on the other end are, are both finishing and getting to the free throw line. The world is a great place. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no need to mess with the rhythm. But again, Peyton is a, is a young player, and uh, really he's, uh, he, he uh, just joined the team recently and started to practice with them. So he's still a little bit raw, but you will see very excellent athletic talent. And again, he and Treve are both really tough on the glass, both ends. Yeah, Pauline Nadeau, number four, is in the game now for Iron Bray. He can really shoot it. As this is Jones, bottled up by Reed. Now a deep three from Mantley, off back rim. Rebound tracked down by Flint through contact has, and called has, for the travel. And there again, the old board, the old board. With, with Treve and Peyton on the floor together, the boards for Armbre will, what I said earlier about their concern, will be somewhat diminished. Those two will go get the ball. It's Reed swings it over to Shane Lucas on the left wing. Now Reed, touch at the top of the key. Good movement. Victorian Oliver cashes the triple. And the Knights cutting their way back into this one. They trail by seven. That's a good look, and he was in the pregame information we had listed as one of the kids who can knock down the three, as well as being a good playmaker. There's nice ball movement. Treve, Jones looking to show some range. Trevay can actually hit that. He needs time and space at this point, but he can hit the three. This is Ryan Miller lining up the triple. That rims out, but another offensive rebound for the Knights. And he Oliver. Walked. Yep, got caught. Shuffled his feet on the catch and is called for the travel. So 18-8 the score with 246. I don't know if I trust anything about that scoreboard right now, Beth. Uh, <laughs> I've, Clock's I've, moving. You know, I've gone out to a few high school games yeah. this year, and it's early in the season for yes. the kids on the on the scoring table as well. Yep. So you almost need to assign an assistant to watch the clock and Absolutely, the score. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, but again, yep. they're young too, and All they're right. learning. Oh, and we got a veteran officiating crew here tonight. They're not yeah. going to uh, let anything slide. So they'll, they'll make sure we're on top of it. As Flint now looking to drive right. Good defense there and blocked by Reed. As Beals, deep three, no good. And now, Reed cleans it up. We'd rather have seen Peyton. He drew three. Kick it, and either Renai gets a good catch and shoot, or we swing and get something real good on the other side. He'd done his work by drawing three. Victorian Oliver drives left right at Beals, and he'll head to the line to shoot up here. That was a good take. Well, this Millwood team returns most of their roster that won the Provincial Bronze last year in Cape Breton. Finished fourth. Yeah, they, they uh, really were strong in the latter part of last season and showed the promise of what this season is now beginning to, 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 uh, to show. As Oliver hits the first of two free throws, guess we'll go with the score on the board until corrected 18-9. <laughs> Ospreys have the early advantage here, but Millwood. Pace is starting to, to come back th their way. That score hasn't changed yet. No. Nope. The, <laughs> <laughs> those things drive me crazy. <laughs> me too. Just, just ignore it for now as Beals driving, kicking. And 
that is. Move. Yeah. That is Samuel Priotti. Yeah. Proietti. 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 Yeah, Sam got a little too upright on that, and when he saw the late back cut, which would have given them a, a, a layup, he was a little too upright, so that caused the, the pivot foot to drag. As you go into traffic, get down, and then get down lower. Stay down, play down. Like now that. we got 1811. That's interesting. Go. And so, and I think it was 188 uh, before the two free. Yeah, yeah. Well, Paul DeBailey is uh, again. Paul DeBailey, Manny States, our third official's yeah, name. And is um, Aaron. I know his name. Yeah. Time anyway, uh, as veteran I, officials. I've hit that age and stage, Alan, where the names don't always <laughs> come immediately. I got terrible, you, terrible, terrible thing well, to experience. You've, uh, you've probably forgotten more basketball players in this community than most of us will ever know. <laughs> so. got, yeah, he, good call. He walked. Johnson. Nye shuffled the pivot foot on his move. It, sometimes kids will just try yeah. a little over try to get no. a little too much on that first step. All you need to do is make one fake. Not okay. to rant, and I know you're working on uh, getting getting your social media game up, but you see some of the trainers on Instagram on, on the social media with all the jab step and the, You it, know, this is not a new concept. The no. stake and the sizzle. Yes, absolutely. And what gets sold unfortunately is the sizzle. What what you wins new, games. You, yeah, you probably shouldn't be steak anymore, but some form of protein <laughs> is what you're looking for. Gotcha. Nice grilled chicken. As he's Donovan tough down Reed, there. He's tough. He's strong. Tough on both ends, I'll tell you. He's very solid. He takes his time. People who finish down in the paint take a little longer time than people who don't. Johnson driving. Got balance, should have kicked it. And another one and done for the Osprey. And don't look now, Armbray cutting into this lead methodically. As this is Oliver around the Lucas Smith screen. Skip pass. Open three ball halfway down. Rims good out. Good look. In and out. Good ball move to set it up. That was Shane Arm. Lucas, the great nine forward on yep. that three ball. Johnson yeah, he's, he's got some talent. And loose ball picked up by Lucas. Yeah, there are a number of quite talented grade nine and tens in the province. Shane would be definitely among that group. Oliver now. Around the Smith screen, looking for the post entry. Nice. And active hands by Beals, comes away with the steal. There's an example of the quick hands where the ball was effectively presented to Ronai. Beals, step back, Hold triple, back. nothing but nylon. Ronai Beals, are you kidding me? That is a big time shot from number one. Lucas now, dribble handoff for Oliver. Reed brings the high ball screen. Oliver left open, looking to answer, no. Johnson with the second chance, and Armbray is just okay. going to hold on to it, and they will take a 21-13 lead into the second quarter. And, I, I mean, to be expected, we saw some great play from Ronai Beals and, and from Nye Johnson of Armbray, but Millwood, big advantage on the interior, offensive rebound, and Donovan Reed putting in work down low. Yeah, I think when Travay and uh, Peyton came in together for Armbray, the rebounding started to even off, and down the stretch, the defensive rebounding by Armbre was much better. Uh, and Millwood weren't getting nearly as many second looks, but Millwood began to knock down more of their first first shots, right? Down at this end, remember I commented earlier that Millwood's ball movement was better, which means the, the ball is, is using more of the court. Armbre was early getting a lot of easy early penetration. That tends not to last against a good opponent over 40 minutes. So uh, Millwood's defense on ball have gotten better. The help's gotten a little better. So the attempts have gotten more difficult for Armbre. Millwood has cleared the boards and then gotten a little, nothing tremendous in transition for either team yet. They're both having to play against D. But uh, over the course of the next 30 minutes, we'll see does Armbre make the next adjustment to the adjustment defensively Millwood has made. Absolutely, you're watching live coverage of Armbray Osprey's home basketball action right here on Maritime Athletic Profiles YouTube. Thank you for joining us for some Monday night action. And Bev, I mean, as we mentioned uh, a little bit during that first quarter, these two programs, the last two years really have been something to behold in terms of coming from, you know, Division Three for Armbray, uh, the, the lower end of Division One for Millwood. I'll tell you, 
Sacred Heart, the team that I coach, we beat both these teams as recently as 2021, Armbray as recently as 2022. But the uh, the development and the growth and the talent that has come well, into these schools in the last two seasons yeah. has been phenomenal to see. Yeah, and again, people don't talk about it enough, but the reality is, you know, the uniform says Armbre. It's who's wearing the uniform that counts. Sure. <laughs> and the, the young men who are starting to wear that uniform are more talented than uh, the kids who were wearing the uniform a couple of years ago. Well, I'll, I'll give a quick shout out to uh, the men who are wearing the, the quarter zip long sleeves as well. Their coaching staff, excellent. Yep. But talent is talent. Talent and, is talent. And the, the, there's no question the coaching is very, very good. And, and uh, Donovan Reed continues to give the Ospreys fits inside, and he'll head to the line to shoot two. You know, JT has experience in several provinces. Sean Mantley, uh, decades of experience at very high levels. And both uh, uh, Keyshawn and Tariq, young coaches, really keen, very bright, very interested in the game. And so you got four very good basketball minds on that bench. Uh, Damon Cole, again, a lot of experience uh, to bring to his coaching thing. Uh, a key, though, again, is always going to be who's wearing the uniforms. Of Developmentally, course. coaches bring, can bring their best every year and could do a great job of developing. But who shows up to be developed is a factor. As Reed goes 0 of 2 from the line, and a twirling attempt there by Ollie Nadeau. He'll head to the line to shoot a pair. Now, when he turned, it's interesting, Millwood did not have to foul at that point because he had basically turned and it wasn't going to go in. He had gotten to a great spot, but if he just goes strong up through the contact, he has a chance for three. But again, he's young too. Uh, and these young men, you have to learn through experience, coaching, playing against good competition, practicing with good players every day, and then experiencing games uh, is how one develops. And but you can go. see even on that shot, remember I said how, how he, is, he can shoot it. Yeah. So that touch, that shooter's touch. <laughs> that, he wasn't pure with that, but it, the touch was so soft it went in. Splits a pair from the line, now guarding Oliver around a series of ball screens. Open three ball there for Tyler Mulvey, and he is a bit short, just checked into the game. Now Nadeau, knifing in transition. That's a good take, not quite high enough on the glass, but a very good take up Can't until that point. Finish it with the left, and here come the Knights. He is left handed. Nine. All he is left handed. Around the Reed ball screen. Under the horn set. He Mulvey. walked, but he got away with it. Now Miller dumps it off to Reed, nicely done, cutting in and finding the big man in the dunker spot for the easy deuce. Now Ermbre pressuring Johnson, gets it ahead for Beals. On the left wing, defended by Reed, he's in a stance, Beals fires it up, high off rim, and that's gonna be a foul against Flint on the rebound. Millwood trailing by seven. They trailed by as many as 14 early in that first well, quarter. Well, the early jump, it, it, with, with teams that are relatively even, the early jump almost never decides the game mm -hmm. unless it is stupendously wide. Uh, partly because there's still a lot of minutes to go. And uh, the team that got the early lead sometimes thinks they've got the lead is bigger relatively than it is. Knights back in this diamond press and Priotti guys to get rid of it. Now Beals. Tough step through the lane. Throws it over to Johnson. He'll drive left. Nice dishes dish. it off for Flint. And he is fouled. We'll head to the line to shoot too. Nice dish. And, and the penetration and the nice dish to, to Peyton to go up in rhythm is what led to the being fouled. And, and one of the aims for any off, uh, basketball team offense is get to the free throw line, get to the free throw line, get to the free throw line. All kinds of great reasons why. Absolutely, and I'm impressed by the Armbre guards, the ability to drop it off there at the last second. We've seen them make some tough finishes, and sometimes when you're driving to the hoop, you get a little tunnel vision on the rim, but knowing that you've got a capable big in that dunker spot, you can drop it off. Well, and that the and, and these young men, again, uh, they got uh, a lot of playing time. Both Renai and Nye last year got a lot of playing time as uh, I think Nye was grade 10 last year and Renai was grade eight or nine, whatever. Yeah. 
Uh, and they, last year, succumbed to tunnel vision too often. But you learn, right? So, and again, they're getting good feedback and coaching from the bench as, as it goes on. As Flint forces the turnover. Now Beal straight away triple. No. Didn't go, but Long that's rebound. not a terrible look for him. Otanado short again. Miller hustles it down and able to earn his team possession. Headsy play there by Ryan Miller, the grade 12 guard wearing number 27 for Millwood. That lead has is, is kind of stayed around 7-8 for the last quite a while now. So we'll see who gets the next momentum shift. Momentum shift resulting in maybe like a run of six. That would make a difference depending on who gets one. That's Oliver. Entry pass here for Fabian Cauley. High off glass, halfway down, rims out. Now Fabian, I think, is a grade 11 kid. Yep. Um, not physically the presence that uh, Donovan, Donovan is. Yeah, and I, you can I tell expect, it in that attempt. I expect this will be a short breather for Donovan Yeah, I Reed. expect he's, he, again, he's out there to work hard, get on the glass, got good length, doesn't have the strength and the, and the physical presence that Donovan Reed does. But As Miller puts up a catch and shoot triple, no good. Lane cleans up the glass. Here's Beals. Uh, and that yeah. is well taken. The charge by Victorian yeah. Oliver. Wasn't what do you like about that play, The Beth? gap wasn't there. The call was right. Uh, and you'll notice also Renai got upright. Yeah. When you get upright, you are no longer having as much influence on the situation. The situation is now influencing you. Nice try to slither through. Uh, apparently hummingbirds do that very well. <laughs> Renai was not able to go. in that instance. I think the, the call was correct. The hummingbirds, I like that. Yeah, they go one wing, then they get the body, oh, then they get the other Oh, they can fly in any wing. direction. Yes. That's, uh, I like that. That's a good comparison for a, a shifty basketball player. That's a walk. As Miller. I, I, I mentioned, actually, the, we did, uh, Leslie Stace and I did yep. their first game last week. With the quality of refereeing, mm -hmm. these players benefit from that too. Coaching is a factor of getting better. So is refereeing. When you play in front of good refereeing, oh, yeah. you're going to learn more quickly what you can do and not do. That a tough That's a take nice there. take. And you'll notice he stayed down. He yep. was down. He was solid. He was in control. Balance. Finishes high off the glass with the left. Nye Johnson off to a hot start today. It's good entry motion offense there and good cut pretty good read yeah really good d yeah didn't give him a passing lane if he wanted to complete the pass he had to throw it to the other shoulder some discussion here about the shot clock it should not be 24 as they'll yeah again early season the 14. Uh, high school table officials uh, the 14 24 thing is Beal is going to check back in. Barely the reason I think Nye is there. quickly in and out is, he, again, he's still recovering from that high ankle mm -hmm. sprain. I think they're trying to be careful with him. Oh, Nice D. Ronai Beal's the no-look steal. Nice Showtime dip. coming up. Boom. Peyton Flint, two hands for safety. Throws yeah, it down. I, I mentioned he and Trayvon can rise fairly quickly with authority. But uh, Ronai made that play happen. The Absolutely. D, then that was the, a, the a quick feed. No look you know. steal. He, he just yep. anticipated but where he had the pass his hands was coming. Positioned well and Playing the passing lanes. Mulvey looking for the answer. Rip. No. Good rebound there by Flint, okay. and he is fouled, and the momentum's starting to go the way. Remember, of the I home talked team. about a six point jump. We may be about to see one. It's up to 12 now, and Donovan Reed right on cue, checking back in for Millwood. Yeah. As that was about an 8 0 run as. Uh, Reed sat for less than two minutes. Yeah. As Nato will bring it across half court. Shadowed by Lucas. Drive, spins, kicks. Mantley triple, knocks it down. Smooth lefty stroke from Elijah Mantley. Now, one of the things that's interesting up to, to me, Alan, is uh, Millwood's starters by and large, I've not seen a lot of floor time, and I'm not sure there, there may be some messaging being delivered. Yeah, Jaden <laughs> Lucas sure. uh, particularly, we haven't seen him much since the first five well, minutes. Well, or uh, Baroni. Yeah. And, and now Nadeau nice in transition. transition, and it's all coming up Osprey right now. Now they're getting transition as well as the penalty. The, you know, boom. The game open can open up very quickly if you start getting transition hoops. Lucas 
Beals looking to play the passing lane. Mulvey escapes that one. Reed down low, offensive foul. Great take there by Peyton Flint. We don't have a restricted area in the, uh, under they, the no, basket. And they don't. And it, yeah. It's funny, <laughs> I, asked, I asked a coach who's very knowledgeable. Yes. And uh, I said, do you guys use, is that part of your game? And he said, sometimes. But he said, I honestly don't think the referees. So right. I don't know whether it's part it's meant uh, to be part of the high school game yet or not. If so. I were Damon Cole, I'd be complaining just a little bit about that one. But Yeah. <laughs> and that's a factor because the kid was going to make the, 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 the take. No question. He had the... Dribble but that's, those kind of calls are always a little bit 50-50 yeah. kind of and the referee makes his decision and the play goes on. You know? And Proetti called with Shuffled the foot. shuffling the, the pivot there. As Nye Johnson will come back in. You're right. These are quick substitutions. Kind of the, uh, you know, it, there it's an eight-man rotation, but in and out, in and out, well, in and, and out they go. And, and we haven't mentioned, but Dion. Coward, Coward is Coward in a boot, a and, which is a good thing because he played last, played very well last yeah. game, but on one leg, <laughs> and wisely uh, got some medical uh, treatment and is going to give himself a chance to heal now. Traveled but he played incredibly well. Tra uh, traveled with the team to Montreal on yeah. the weekend too, so yeah. got some uh, some but great you know, team bonding. These young guys, I mean, they, they really Jalen Berglund Simmons is also yes. not in uniform tonight. He's sick. Right. Uh, and, you know, they will they really want to play. And, yeah. you know, that's we were all that way when we were playing. But there comes a time when the decision not to play is the decision to have a longer career later on. That might be three fouls in the first half on Donovan Reed, and that would be a yeah, difference maker in this game. It's a huge difference. And, again, they, they're already in a situation where... One foul away from the penalty. And they need him on the court to begin to carve away at this uh, this margin. Now I missed the first free throw. Johnson, another Preston and Elite second. product. And again, Treve comes oh. up. Nice dish. Oof. Beautifully done. Johnson just can't finish Treve with the left, again. but the active hands of Treve Jones. Manley's triple, no good. One Umbre of the things that makes advantage. the make, whoop, here we go. Mulve leaking out. Oh. They'll step back into a triple. No, nothing going the Knights way right now. Watch out, here comes Manley in transition. Floats it up and in with the left hand. Rather than pull that out for the three, he had an angle. He was probably going to score the layup or get fouled. When you're down like this, you might want to <laughs> do what's in front of you rather than get too creative. Because they didn't have rebounding in transition if he missed it, Miller. which he did. That was a strange ball fake there. Now stepping around, unable to finish. Off balance. When we get a chance, I want to speak to about Trave for a minute. Because sure. there's some exceptional qualities that he brings. Ronai Beal said, talk about me first. No, Jones down low, unable rushed, to finish. Rushed the putback. If he'd taken a little bit more time to get himself balanced and located, he would have a better chance to make the putback. But he got that board, you know, very actively. The Knights playing hot potato. Miller on the drive is fouled. And how here, about we talk a little bit about... Here's the thing about Trevay Jones. Yeah. Not only his, is he unusually quick up to the up, up and second up and third up, which is one of the things the pros scout for, by the way, but he's great length, not simply head height, but wingspan. And as you saw in those sequences, he's got extremely good hands for a kid that size and length. And what I've seen so far in his play, he's just got some innately positive... Uh, understandings about about how to play the game. As you're going to look at some action here, the Peyton Flint two-handed throwdown. Let's take a little walk and watch some replays, shall we, Bev? There's a corner triple by Elijah Mantley. And here, Armbray leaking out in transition. This was Nadeau with a finish up high. Long arms on that young man, and now Reed battling down low. That was a charge. That's the key one we were yeah. talking about, but that's a charge. It's deep so. under the basket. But yeah, and there is no semicircle, so it's and a charge. Triple there by Miller, one of the few bright spots of this first Miller half. Miller is, I think, genu generally one of their top three-point shooters. That was Mantley in transition. Interesting, Arbre, they got a, quite a few lefties on this squad, don't they? Well, you know, uh, both uh, Elijah and Ollie yeah. are lefties. And then, hmm, who else? 
Is Nia think. Johnson lefty or he's nope, just... Nye, okay, Nye, okay. But Nye has been, again, well coached coming up. Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, came up, I first met Nye when he was uh, part of Coulter Simmons' uh, We Will Win program. Yep. And uh, even then he was, he was just a really diligent young man, working very hard on his game and his skills and and uh, just trying to get the mental part of the game as well as the physical. So he is you know, not fully ambidextrous, but in penetration, pretty, pretty he, can finish, he can finish we, strong left and that, right. We've seen that already tonight. As Ryan Miller hits the first of two from the line. This is the second, but good positioning down low there by number 30, not on my roster. You got a number 30 for Millwood? 30 for whom? Millwood. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, I do not. We'll find out <laughs> at half, maybe. I do not. As there's a steal by number 10, Aaron Forrest. Now Oliver Miller. Again, we still have not seen much of the Millwood starters in the second quarter. And we're going to get an illegal screen against number 30. So that, uh, unnamed <laughs> participant. <laughs> Hmm. Picks up the foul on the bad ball screen. I can't tell you how many of those calls I saw in Montreal this past weekend. Really? Time and space is what the refs yeah. kept saying. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, you talk about these good referees, I, I might uh, go down there and give them a hug. I'm so happy to be away from the Montreal refs. I'll well, tell you. there are, however, I used to spend a fair amount of time yeah. in Montreal basketball, so there are some very good officiating. I'm there. sure. Yeah. I'm not sure whether you met them this weekend or not. I don't think I did. <laughs> That's <laughs> a uh, tough finish there. Count it and one for Renai Beals. Again, on that one, Renai got, I call it attack advantage angles, which is what he consistently is doing. Mm -hmm. And once you get that angle, if you just stay down, maintain balance and, and strength, you're, you're often going to come away with, the, with three or the opportunity to get three. Beals is silky smooth. He's got to be the high man through this first half. Miller, too strong. Jones. Secures the defensive rebound. Beals nice. skips it ahead for Nedo. Trying to move it. Uh, and Miller. Didn't need the dribbles no. there. Just move. The, you haven't got anything. Move the ball quickly and get it reversed. And let's see what's on the other side. So but again, line. these things kids will learn as they play together. And Ollie is new to the arm break program this year. Uh, and I, I suspect that the program she's coming from, he has been the, the top kid or, or certainly one of the two top kids. So he's got to, as you play with, with greater talent, you learn that, oh, I can trust my teammates to do this and that. Jones, great use of the drop step down low there. I, I like, you know, he's, he's pretty fundamental, some, some old and school you know moves what? in the he, post. He's relatively new to the game. He played wow. for Tugi Wright, Terry Wright at the Community yep. Y last year, and I know that Terry worked with him on his interior footwork and movement. And when I saw him last spring in the under-16 provincials, he was, he was not where he is now. <laughs> so, it, but you could tell he had been working on it. So he's already, you know, improved from, from that to over the off season. So you know you've got a young man. And the last time I saw him, he was in the Canada Game Center oh. working on his game. <laughs> I, I saw so. a clip from uh, last week's game against Bayview. You were on the call. That catch, no dribble, drop step, throw down. That mm -hmm. is something you cannot really teach. This I mean, elevator you can teach, is going up. That is going up very going. quickly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tremendously talented young man. Hits the first free throw and... That's something nice to see from a young big man, too. Knocks he's got a nice down. Touch. He's got good hands. He's got nice touch. And, and it, again, he's a young, long yeah, guy. He's right? one to watch. He's already got some, some skill things that a lot of young, long guys don't have. You know? Oliver. There's Ollie with his. Ollie's got pretty quick hands, too. This, this Armbre lineup, top to bottom, a lot of quick hands. There's an example. As Miller puts up a straightaway triple and cashes it out, Ryan Miller. And again, Miller, Miller I think, consistently uh, well, is, their, is their top three-point shooter. Against this, uh, you know, we're not seeing probably three of their main offensive weapons, and yeah, Miller really yeah, keeping the team uh, afloat. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Maybe we miss foul trouble. Reed, yes, we're quite yeah. sure is in foul trouble. I'm not sure about the guards, but uh, the guard play was one of the the factors that I thought Armbre was going to have to deal with because the guard play for Millwood has been very good. Johnson now for, beautifully uh, done. I.e. in the last season and this season. 
So the guard play we're seeing now is the guard play of younger kids. Right. Well, they had a, a great, very talented guard, Ben Dale, who's now at Ross St. Netherwoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder where he went. He, that well, kid you know, can that's, play. <laughs> You know, we'll, we'll talk about it a little right now. That's one oh. of the things about, about bringing in all this talent and developing them. Yes, it, it'll create a very good team, but also you may lose some to the next level before you get your three or four years. We're in them. an environment where the suitcase and the passport are <laughs> part of the game. Sure. I'm, you know, and I, yeah. I have thoughts in both directions on that. Of course but. you do. I wouldn't expect any, any other luck. As uh, inbound here for Oliver, now Miller. Defended by Beals, he'll drive left, hangs. Good defense there by Beals and a better rebound by Jones. 22 on the clock. Beals lost it, good Pick hustle it by Miller. And Beals able to escape. Skip good pass to the corner. Pass. Well done there by Nadeau to handle that one. It was a tough one. Nadeau step back, triple, knocks it down. Oh, That baby. sequence of passing and exchanges yeah. and decision making, Alan, was what led to an imbalance in rhythm, Jay. Yeah, well, I, if any, I, I any be one of them had shot before, that would not have been in balance and rhythm. That pass from Beals, if I was a coach, it's a no, no, yes kind of moment. It was a underhand scoop pass yeah, well cross court to the corner. The intent was fine. The yeah. delivery is not quite there, but by next year, he'll probably it. be smoother with that. But Nadeau moved his feet well. The catch nice it, catch. recognized he didn't have it, moved it quickly to Treve, who then penetrated, drew a second defender, moved it back. And all he still knew, he didn't have a great look, showed it, took the one bounce, got his balance and rhythm, and knocked it down. That's a great sequence. It was. And we'll take another look at that shortly here as that does it for the first half. Sure, okay. Bev's, uh, Bev's on a mission. I'll, I'll uh, take us into half with some highlights here. Shout out producer Clark and the team from Maritime Athletic Profiles as... Smooth finish at the rim there by Nye Johnson. Now Johnson breaking down his defender, and that was the same one twice. But we see there the left hand. He is not left-handed, according to Coach Greenlaw. And there, that dagger to end the first half. Ollie Nadeau, smooth as you like, puts the Ospreys in front, 46-22. We're going to be back here in five minutes. I think Coach Greenlaw's got an interview cooking up, but we'll see you soon right here for the second half on Maritime Athletic Profiles.
Your gifts directly contribute to real, tangible change on our campus and will immediately impact all of our students. With your support, we can expand our programs and fund enhancements to our classrooms and co-curricular learning experiences. Your gift, no matter the size, can make a difference. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. At Armbre, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice, and I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.
I'm not getting sound. Oh, yeah. Power urge, good. All right, welcome back to Maritime Athletic Profiles live coverage of Armbray Ospreys basketball action. Alan April here, joined by Bev Greenlaw. We'll try to talk through it, Bev. I'm not sure where, can you hear me? I can okay, hear you because you're two feet away. And that's you're why I can hear you. Ahead. We have no sound. Oh, well, we'll talk to each other as... Uh, can anyone out there in uh, there viewer some land here? There Indeed, there were. In, that, in a situation like that, when Sam doesn't handle it cleanly, pick it up and move it out of traffic. Don't try to dribble through two when you haven't handled it cleanly. Nice look. Ah. Three more dribbles. We've got a two-on-one with Nye over here, and executed properly. Uh, Armbray's going to get a layup. But again, Millwood starts the half with uh, some turnovers. Nice downshift, but the pass out of traffic can't be up through the hands. It's got to be down or under. I'm not sure. Not sure I agree with uh, Paul on that one. I think the pivot foot might. Decision there for again a young big guy. Right hand on the left side. Here come the Osprey the other way. Heels left wing. Got about a three. Faces man. Move it again. Good. Jones got knocked there. away. Can, do you have the only sound here? Okay.
showtime the other way.
much needed a rest because he just sprained his pace in the third quarter. And it's the pace. They come forward. Would you believe basketball likely is not his best sport? In fact, he's a quarterback. Not just a football but he's a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> score was 44 to 22 and it looks like we have 16 to 9 so the Aus the uh, Knights have outscored 16 to 9 through this uh, yeah. third quarter. Well essentially we're down to what 18 now so it yeah. wasn't too bad. Uh, so it hasn't. It's 24 at that. Yeah it was 24 so, so uh, that's a six point differential and again it's all about the
And the bodies are flying out there, and it's the physicality of this game is ramped up, and so is some of the attitude on the court. Yeah, well, we saw that early, and then it, it kind of went away for a while, but now, of course, it's become closely contested. Some of it has come back, but neither team will benefit from that. Part. As Miller misses the three, Osprey looking to get loose in transition. And that's a travel. 15 nine when he got there and did the first kick it. If he kicks and we get pass pass out of that, something fairly positive could develop. But by keeping the dribble and kind of reprobing, he just uh, kind of allowed the defense to stay put. Shane it led eventually to his travel in traffic. Shane Lucas, the grade nine guard, bringing it up the court for the Knights. Entry to Otho in the horn set. Now dribble handoff action. Miller gets downhill, bottled up by Priotti. Miller steps through, no good. Good rebound there by Beals, and the Osprey are off and running. Okay, here we have transition. That's pretty good. Uh, good read, but Trevay was there to finish. Johnson traveled. Pardon? Johnson traveled, too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he may, I, 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 possibly. I don't know. He overshot it. But. As Jones secures the rebound, Johnson down low, and... That will remain Osprey ball. Yeah, and 18 on the shot clock, five point margin, six to go. I think it's probably going to be a game from here. Well, I'd say so. I, I suspect we won't see Mo control spurt from either team, but we'll see. Inbound for Jones. Shot clock down to 14, it's Beals, defended by Mulva, sidestep, triple, no. Miller secures the rebound. Not, those have not been dropping from Renai lately. It might be better to move the ball and see what you can get with, after moving players and ball. There goes Treve with good hands again and good body control, but doesn't get the finish. But Priotti is fouled and will head to the line to shoot two. Oh, boards again. Would like to see Treve in that instance. See if you can slash to that glass, to an angle that gets you an opportunity to use the glass rather than trying to finesse over the rim. You've just come almost full court. That's kind of tough to do, then regain balance and control to finish here. Soft touch, but if you've only got the rim on your side, it's a little harder than if you got the backcourt. Samuel Priodi on the line, and shout out to him. He's he's uh, he's an original Armbray Osprey. He, he was in this team. And he was P3 here days. before the influx yep. of, of the, the, the uh, talented uh, kids began. On my so, Sacred Earth side, we're of the other talented kids, because he himself is a yeah. pretty talented kid. But he was, I, get, I think, kind of the lone ranger. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. As Priotti goes one of two from the line, and the score was 59-57, so a, a little 4-0 run in a fourth quarter that buckets have been hard to come by. Yeah, 4-0 run, and now, you know, the timeout's called because uh, did, was, did Millwood call the timeout? 
Not sure. Uh, probably because my guess, just made the free throw. My yeah. guess is because what Coach Cole doesn't want to see is that magic number of 6-0. 6-0 mm. tends to be a, kind of a key mo thing. So you want to avoid that. You want to train your players if you can't afford to take timeouts when those things are happening to train them that when they are on the wrong side of a 6-0 run, light bulbs should go off in their heads and they've got to get a a real good possession the next time down. I see over in the corner, Nye Johnson. Uh, remember I told you about the high oh, ankle yeah. sprain. He seems to have tweaked it again. Um, again, hey, we were all young kids and played the game and loved it at one point. Uh, ankles are tough. Well, <laughs> and when, it's hard to be patient when you're when the, these kids age. But And it's so early in a long season. We're, we're at November, and, and, you know, these guys need to – March is the goal. Provincials in March. But when you're – 14, 15, oh, 16, did you think that way? No, <laughs> certainly not. It doesn't come with the territory. So, uh, but, you know, again, he's played well, but he's, he's not fully healed. And and for this Armbray team, I mean, you, you, the youth we've we've gone on about, but also missing Dion Coward, missing Jaden Berglund Simmons, um, you know, already kind of running a, an eight-man rotation, and they've played five games in the last three days coming into the day. That I, I think Coach Tramble, even when he has a full line, he plays a lot of kids anyway. Yeah. So when he is missing kids for injury, so he does a, a great job of just shuffling, shuffling, and figuring out good combinations and making it work. And again, they've got he's got three very good assistants on that bench. Miller triple too strong. Reed second chance no. Missed an easy bunny there. And playing volleyball, Nadeau comes away with it. Nadeau downhill, the lefty. Got himself too deep. Bad angle. Tried oh, to no. salvage it, but uh oh. And he's down. Looks like an awkward slip there on the baseline. Yeah, I didn't see it happen, but it looks like left, left leg. The last thing the Osprey need. As well, we do have their upcoming schedule. They'll be back in action this weekend at the Grammar Classic. Well, you talk about getting a lot of games in. Again, this is only the uh, third league game of the season for the Osprey, as it does look to be that left ankle for Ollie Nadeau. But it's it's only their third le league game. God says, I'll give you this wonderful game called basketball. You'll fall in love with it, and I'm going to give you ankles to go along with it. Uh, it it's it's oh, just yeah. a factor. It's a factor. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame, but it's, I think he's probably going to see if he can come back. As Jones can't get the land to go, Reed with the rebound. Five minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. It's been an exciting one here. At the Osprey Nest. Floater, Lucas connects. Very strong take uh, by the Lucas take. That's a grade nine, folks. Shane Lucas and Mantley. Mantley dribbled it out of bounds. So I know I know you talk about the substitution patterns, but the Osprey are, are if they bring in another man off the bench, it'll be the first time we've seen him tonight. If if uh if they bring in another player off the bench, it'll be the first we've seen oh, of them tonight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they, he's, he's gone. He's played a lot of kids to, to, to the depth that he has. Yeah, yeah. They're down to about five now, though, so this will be... Uh, Anyone after this will be very inexperienced. Yeah, with all the going down, any sub and, hereafter and will John, be Johnson, very experienced. Yeah. Probably the next guy would be Will Stewart, I guess, is what he has to it. Well, and there, sure enough, he's getting ready to come to the There you go, the, the Tsar Bev Greenlaw, and Will Stewart's first action of the night comes at the 447 mark of a four-point game. Yep, that can happen. <laughs> it's a high-leverage situation, but this has been a war of attrition tonight for the Osprey. This would be a gutsy victory, Bev. Miller now gets into the lane. Well defended, avoided any reach, just went up strong, and uh, 
didn't block the shot, but prevented it from getting a good shot for Light to fill in the floor. Trevay Jones now the pivot. Beal, shot clock down to 10, and Stewart wasn't ready for it. Well, again, he just stepped on the floor and, and uh, you know, no chance to warm up or whatever. And again, th this happened. But uh, four point game, four minutes, plenty of time for anything to happen. This game is wide open. Shane Lucas, defended by Elijah Mantley. Post entry for Reed. Jones brings the double, doesn't matter. Reed sneaks through to the left hand layup. That one a little tougher. He was able to step through the double. Uh, your, your physical presence on the double has to be a little more tough. Again, the pressure is, is affecting the number of extended pressure, basically. And the Knights can tie it up or take the lead here. It would be the first time all night that the Osprey have not led this game. Yep. Uh, but again, that's why you play 40. And... Uh, Really, availability of players to be on the court. If you think about it, remember we were talking about talent? The first half, the big lead for Armbre was achieved largely against not quite. Oh, ball. baby. Elijah Manley, silky smooth with the step through and the lefty finish. And again, a settling type hoop. Brings it back to four and, ch and potentially could give Armbray a chance to change momentum. That's a big hoop. Huge play from a grade nine, and uh, Jones on the other end pulls the chair, forces the turnover, but Manley throws it away. Jones gets it back. Here come the Osprey. Priority, no. Stewart! And Will Stewart makes a nice put back. That was fortunate for Armbray to get away with that. That pass was too long. If Trevay flashes the middle on that, that pass becomes much more Catchable, breaks the pressure down, then he turns, looks, and they're going to have diagonal angles and space and get numbers. But they got away with it. <laughs> the Knights with second and third chances. Reed spins, blocked by Jones. Elijah just took a hit either in the jaw or the neck. That was fantastic defensive positioning there by Jones. Yeah, hey, the kid, he... He has the potential to be really quite tough. You know, he's, he's got, there aren't too many factors you would say in a basketball player I want that he yeah. doesn't have. Well, and, and you've been watching basketball in this province for a long, long time. Uh, you know, the, the silky smooth guards, they, they we see those. But a, a big like this, uh, you know, a, a six, six grade nine or grade 10, right? Think about Will Rizzo for the Of course. Race. Thank you. And, and I do. So you got to go back 30 years ago for the... It, I'm no good in duration, but if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I'll give Will a call and say, Will, how long ago was it? <laughs> but, uh, you know, we don't get in this province a lot of kids. Like that. A special talent, and he's made his free throws tonight, too. Okay, he's got good hands. Yeah. He's got good touch. Lucas now looking to stop the bleeding. It's a 7-0 run for the Osprey. Reed. The Knights can't buy a basket right now, and they've all been in tight. Yeah, they've, they've had good opportunities. It's just, uh, again, it, it, sometimes you finish, sometimes you don't. But Reed, I think, typically has been a better finisher this season than he has been a part of the night. Although he's still probably the best finisher on the court. Great pass by Beals, even better finish by Jones, and the Osprey lead is back up to 10. Tyler Mova answers with the triple. Now Beals trapped, finds Parati across half. Stewart down low, walks. Now, in that instance, script wise, you'd say, okay, Sam gets it here, we got a two on one, he makes a key. I have a thing called who is who and how. I'm not sure you want to put Will in that situation, given the the situation in which he ended the game. No well, warm-up, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I, I really, and the angle he was was a little low. Well, so maybe I, just take a few extra minutes. Go ahead. I tell my guys, not only are we pressing to potentially turn the ball over, we want to get the ball into somebody's hands who isn't ready for the pressure. Well, again, it's who is who and how, and right now it's a, a you know, it's good in one sense. 
Tyler Mova back to back triples and the lead is down to four with 140 remaining. Here's the bay, double thumb, late. Beals, nice in, steps around Reed, no good. Reed secures the defensive board and the Knights have a chance to cut the lead to a single possession ball game. Mova again, three for three. Tyler Mova is on fire and it's a one point ball game. Now it's interesting, you know, those threes have all been catch and shoot in team and individual rhythm and smooth from an angle. Remember earlier- He I hadn't made one all game. Yeah, he took about three open ones. He took about three open ones yeah. in the first quarter, was short, was long, and yeah. you know, that, keep on shooting when you're a shooter. But just a moment back to that situation with, with uh, Will. Yeah. Uh, and it's not about Will, it's about Will having come in cold, not getting a lot of playing time regularly, being called in a situation, and can we instead downshift with the bounce, Sam keeps the ball, allow the other guys to fill, and then run a, a little bit more team O, which, which doesn't put kind of undue pressure on Will in that situation, because he was actually outnumbered as well on the baseline. Because he's a kid, he's gonna take it, he's gonna try to make that play. Now, in the long run, gives Will that experience of having to try to make that play, but, you know, tactically, at this point, Sam might be better off, and Sam is, you know, a bright kid. But again, experience, experience, experience. You gotta, you gotta do it in different ways a few times. I don't know where the Undertaker music came from, but we got bells ringing here. And maybe, maybe wherever the audio went. And look who's back. Ollie Nadeau back into the game. 119.717. And a steal by Mova off the inbound. Nadeau too relaxed. But lost the ball. To the Shimwe. He had to spin. Lost, lost the ball. So okay. Shimwe lost it on the way up and the he Osprey the dodged the bullet. The arm break kid that receiver is more of a swoop cut movement and replace here rather than just semi fast footed vertical. Nye Johnson also back into the game. Priotti puts up a three. The bank is not open. A minute remaining. The Knights can take the lead here. It's to Shimwe. They're going to have to defend. Mulva. Shot clock down to 10. To Shimwe. Driving. Takes a bump. Count it. And one. Barori to Shimwe. Gives the Knights the lead. And has a chance to make it a two point game here from the line. Yep. And that's a veteran with the ball in the late game situation. Um, did what he needed to do, and then it becomes a question of what positioning and, and decision making does the defense do. And now it's a one point game in favor of Millwood, gets a chance to make it two. First lead all night for the Knights. They trail by 24 at halftime. Barori to Shimwe, the grade 12 guard. A chance here to make it a two point game. He does not, but the rebound is gobbled up by Donovan Reed. Now to Shimwe is going to kill some clock. There's a 13 second difference that game in shot clock. Really to Shimwe, to the hoop. Reed puts it up and gets it to go. Three point ball game. No timeout for the Osprey. Two second difference game in shot clock. They need a triple. Beals, nice in, finds Johnson in the corner. Off the side of the backboard, Johnson gets it back, lays it up and in. 10.1 remaining, it's a one point game. Ombre need to foul, they only have one team foul. They also only have one team yeah. foul, Ben. They, they needed the ball, the foul is not gonna get it. They're, they're too, too much clock, number of fouls away from Bowman. They might not have any timeouts left in this fourth quarter too. Well, Millwood's going to take one here. Yeah. On a mate, we can't call timeout in fever rules, right? When we make, has that? No, changed? when you, yeah, no, correct, yeah. correct. I, I think that I've never liked that, frankly. Right. Uh, when FIBA became the, the set of rules, FIBA has adjusted itself more and more to the NBA. But there are certain factors that I just tactically we want to be able to score there and stop the clock. 
I believe it's the case in the fever we saw from. Is that the case? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's so, the so, <laughs> it's a shame. For the sake of the game of basketball. Okay. So, if you're, if you're Coach Tramble here, you know what the situation is. It's, it's 5.6 seconds. You're going to have to foul three more times. You don't really have time to do that. Well, what you've got to do is almost set up a full court press sideways. Yeah. And you've got to try to influence where they can put it. You trap immediately and hope to kick off it up and get a seal. Because you do not have enough time to make enough foul base, to be quite correctly said. So you got to shoot what a gap on the inbound. You've got to try to get some to the inbound in one of the corners. You've got to trap. You, you would have maybe two seconds to get the ball out of that, and you've got to push. You could get up here and get a half-decent look, but it's not going to be a great ball. It's going to be a front court back inbound. They do not Ooh. have the back court. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> And Reed is open. He didn't need to pass that ball, but he passes it to Mulva. He didn't. And, you know, we but talked again, a lot of... They knocked a couple of seconds off, and they've got uh, two more. We talked about Donovan Reed, his interior presence, and he was in some foul trouble the first half, which made a big impact. But this third quarter, fourth quarter comeback, and that, that go-ahead basket... I would trap, shoot the gap here, see what might happen. But they're running out of time to have this uh, second 1.2 yeah. seconds. Uh, uh, 2. 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1. Oh, 1.2 2 came out. So 2.1 here. Armbray, one more foul to give to get them on the line. It's a steal. No, Miller ends up on top of it. That, that's, they say two calls the game is into. If that thing is an inch different, Armbray gets the possession. They would then not have a lot of time, but they would have had about a second and a half to get to about Babman and Court just over center and launch. But odds are odds, right? What a game, Bev. Yeah. The the Knights' first lead of the game was 72 71, and they right. go on to win it 74 73. Oh, yeah. Once. <laughs> and Donovan Reed right here, big number nine, big gutsy factor. performance. Big factor. Uh, the, Number seven kid there, Tyler Mulvey, I think you said. Yeah, was, making some uh, huge threes in the clutch. Obviously, the huge threes that, that really made the difference. But the real difference was what we talked about throughout the third quarter and into the fourth. Is sure. tempo, 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 and how you attack the press. And I know, uh, again, we, we spoke about the coaching on both sides. Andre coaches will be getting their kids in the team and working on different ways to attack that press and play without a the ball. As well, who you have available help you to put in a uniform is a factor, which we saw on both teams throughout this game. Because who's on the court kind of affects what's on the scoreboard. Well, a great bounce back win for the Knights after losing the final to CPA yesterday. They improved to 2-0 and on the season. The Osprey dropped to 1-2, and but those losses come into very good teams. The CPL and Cheetahs and the Millwood Knights. Uh, arguably, I think Millwood and CPL are certainly among the best yeah. teams in the province this year from everything that everyone's holding them over at the top of the I don't think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think you know what you're talking not, about. Not regarding who's who, I don't. Armbre will be back in action this weekend at the Grammar Classic. More exhibition play for this busy Osprey squad. And the Osprey's girls team will play tomorrow night at CPA. Actually, the boys are back in action Wednesday night as they host the Auburn Eagles at 6 p.m. Hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. That, that's got a lot of uh, hurting ankles there. A lot, you know, it's... It'll be interesting. All right. We ready to wrap it up here? Okay. For myself, Alan April, for Bev Greenlaw, the coach, and the team here from Maritime Athletic Profiles, shout out producer Clark, dealing with all kinds of difficulties tonight, and shout out to the Armbray Ospreys for having us for this fantastic basketball game. Tonight's final score, once again, it was Millwood 74, Armbray 73. Signing off. Oh, you got one more thing. Yeah, just one last thing. Uh, Armbre, this can be a very important learning loss for them. Yes. A lot of good can come from, from this if they can get their kids healthy and, and then get in the gym and work on the things that this game showed them uh, need to, to be further worked on. And again, they're a youthful team. This is, a, a, in one sense, very painful but worthwhile experience to have gone through if you approach it correctly and learn.
Absolutely wise words from the coach, Bev Greenlaw, for him and myself, Alan April, signing off from Halifax. Have a great night, everyone. At Armbray, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice. And I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.